or you got a hedge around him and there's nothing I can do. Hello? Hello? But the devil said, if you will let me, I'll prove to you that Job is just after what he can get out of you. You let me touch him and he'll curse you. And God says, really? I didn't know that. Well, I guess I'll just have to let you do that because if that's the way Job is, I really need to find that out. So the devil, stupid, stupid devil. He, he does his thing. He does his worst, right? Do anything you want to do, you just can't take his life. So he does. Takes all of his cattle, all of his donkeys, all of his sheep, all of his... Uh, is oxen, all of it, and takes all ten of his kids at one time. Ten funerals in one day. Every child Job owned. I say owned. He had. Every child. Ten. Ten. Seven sons, three daughters, one accident, Ten deaths, ten funerals, one day. And Job says, Naked I came into this world, naked I'm going out. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Another conversation. How's it going? Uh, he, he's just, he's. Really? What's the problem? Didn't work. But that's because you put too much limitations on me. You just took everything he's got and ten, all ten of his kids he killed in one time and that wasn't good enough. Poor old devil. So, he says, but you let me touch him. And I'll, I'll prove to you, he'll curse you. So what happened? He touches his body. He's got boils. Have you ever had a boil? I've had a boil. I had a boil on my knee so bad, it was horrible. It was one of the most painful things that ever happened to me in my life. I won't even go into the story. It was horrible. I can't even comprehend having my body completely covered with boils, that the only way I could get any relief would be to scrape my body with a broken piece of pottery just trying to get some relief. But that's where Joel got to. It got so bad that the wife who didn't say, why don't you curse God and die, when she lost all ten of her kids and all of their possessions, said to him, why don't you just give up and and die. Curse God and die. And he said, you speak like a foolish woman. He did not call her a foolish woman. He said, you speak like a foolish woman. What was he talking about? The Bible says, the fool had said in his heart, there is no God. He was saying to her, you speak like someone who denies the existence of God. Shall we receive good at the hands of God? And shall we not receive, one translation puts it, trouble, problems, tribulations, trials. Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive, and the word receive means to accept with approval. It doesn't mean to be passive. We welcome the good. But he wants to know, are we going to welcome the trouble from God just the same? Naked we came into this world. Naked we're going out. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lost everything. Lost all of his kids. Lost his health. And his wife said, why don't you just 
quit and give up, and he was faithful to God. Do you know when Job, when, what, what God finally allowed to happen, to finally get the stuff out of Job he was trying to identify? Not to identify to, to God, but to identify to Job. Because you can't re- deal with stuff that you don't acknowledge is there. And God loves us so much that whatever he's got to do to get that stuff that's buried the deepest in us to the surface so we can deal with it, so that we can go forward in him for his purpose and kingdom's sake, he will do it. You can call it bad. He calls it good. The difference is whether you're looking at the temporal or you're looking at the eternal. You know what had finally had to happen? His friends had to come and finally came to him and said, why don't you just admit you're being punished by God for doing wrong? And you know what Job did then? He began to claim, I haven't done anything to deserve this. And the Lord says, wilt thou condemn me that you can be righteous? As long as he wasn't fixing blame over what was going on. Because when he declared himself innocent, even though he was, he was perfect and upright in all of his ways. But when he, when he, when he yielded to the temptation to blame somebody for what he was going through, that's when he became unrighteous. As long as he was worshiping, as long as he wasn't blaming, he was okay with God. But he got in trouble with God when he began to blame. You know why we blame? We don't like what's going on. And we can't see what's happening. We can't see past what's happening. To see what God's doing. I know. I know. I understand. How impossible this is for the flesh. Because I've got 63 years of dealing. Experience of dealing with flesh. This flesh. I know. In fact. It is impossible. To see things the way they're supposed to be seen. And to deal with them with the attitude you're supposed to deal with them. Except grace. Do it through you. Can't be done. I can't have a right attitude. I can't have a right spirit. I can't deal with my problems correctly. I can't can't not charge God foolishly. That's what Job eventually did. He charged God foolishly. In order to say, I'm innocent, he was innocent. But when he began to say, I'm innocent, implying God was guilty, that's when he got in trouble. It's your fault, God. You're failing me. You let me down. After all I've done for you, after all I have, I have uh, sacrificed for you, after all the prayer, after everything I've done, you let this happen to me? You just charged God. Now, even a man who was perfect and upright in all of his ways did when the pressure got enough because that's what's got to come out of me. Because the truth is, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And it's his right to do so. And it's my right to choose to love him and trust him or hate him and accuse him. It's my right.